Hi, I'm Holly Choi. I'm going to talk a little bit about management theory over the past 50 years. I believe that most of the historical management theories are no longer relevant in a global marketplace and businesses are going to need to start paying attention to the emerging management theories if they're going to achieve any kind of sustainability. So let's walk through the agenda. First I'm going to cover some of the classic management theories, then we'll move into some of the contemporary management theories, and finally we'll, we'll finish off looking at some of the emerging management theories and what companies need to be paying attention to for the very near future. So let's start with some of the classic management theories. In order to understand these, you really have to kind of see what was going on in the country at the time that these theories were developed. Most of them were developed in the 1950s. and Oh, there was a lot of manufacturing still going on. It was right after World War II had ended. There was a huge economic boom, and we were still manufacturing for defense because the government was involved in the Cold War, and, and they really believed that they needed to kind of build up this arsenal for in case we went back to war. Um, nuclear threat was a big deal at the time, and people were actually building bomb shelters in their yards. Uh, home ownership was, was at an all-time high. People were coming back from the war and starting to purchase homes and they were, there was a lot of construction and a lot of um, highway construction so that people could live in the suburbs, work in the city. And once people had bought their homes, they needed goods and services to, to fill those homes. Some of the more popular classic management theories include scientific management theory, which came about in about 1890. Maslow's hierarchy of needs uh, came about in 1954. Herzberg's theory of motivation and hygiene factors in 1959. Scientific management was developed by Frederick Taylor in 1890. It was a manufacturing theory and it was, it was really based on routine tasks, repetition, so a lot of it had to do with standardization, measurements, and specifications, and he, he really kind of built it around this reward versus punishment um, mentality. Then in 1954, Abraham Maslow developed the Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, and this has been really repeated over and over again in management theory mainly because it, it kind of takes the worker and, and brings them down to the lowest possible level in, in which Maslow identifies ph uh, physiological needs as kind of the real basis, which really makes sense if you think about it. People need shelter, food, water, um, sanitation and such just so that they can kind of feel human. So if you don't have that as a base, there's no way for you to kind of work your way up the pyramid and into this self-actualization model. Then in 1959, Frederick Herzberg developed his two-dimensional paradigm of factors that affect job uh, satisfaction in workers. And he believed that there are certain hygiene factors, so sort of a play on Maslow's hierarchy, which was that you know workers definitely need to have those interpersonal connections and good working conditions and a high salary. But he also believed that that was really just kind of a basis and it didn't mean that just because they had those things that workers would be satisfied. So job satisfaction, according to Herzberg, really comes from having certain motivators in place, including the ability for achievement, recognition, enjoying the work itself, having responsibility and the ability to advance. So now let's talk about some of the more contemporary theories, and these have developed over the last 30, 40 years. Um, they started kind of really coming to be in the 60s all the way through the 90s. Now what was going on in the country at that time is that manufacturing was kind of moving outside of the country, the Cold War is ending, and technology is really starting to come into its own. So um, we haven't seen a boom in the internet just yet, but it's coming. There's more of a service industry and more information. So it was really kind of the dawn of the human re relations movement. The human relations movement really began around the Hawthorne experiments that took place between 1924 and 1933. And what the experiments really were was there was a, a 
factory and the experimenters came in to see if they could increase worker productivity by providing different levels of lighting. And then they started kind of changing different things in the working conditions to try and increase or decrease productivity and see what kind of effect it had. And what they noticed was that as the changes were made, worker productivity went up and then eventually it would sort of taper off and go back down to normal. So the real win here though came at the end of the experiment when they stopped all of the experiments and the worker productivity slowly just declined back to its normal, its normal level. And what they realized after talking to some of the workers was that the productivity actually would increase as they gave the, the workers attention. So once their, their attention had waned and nobody was paying attention to the workers anymore, their productivity actually went right back down to its, its previous levels. Another theory that came to be in the late 60s was introduced by Gareth Morgan and Fred Fielder. And this is contingency theory. And basically what they said was that there are external factors that can affect your organization and this was really important because this was the first time that people really kind of gave into the idea that they couldn't control absolutely everything in the organization. So let's talk about some of the emerging theories. The reason why these have kind of come about is because information technology has created a global marketplace which means that we all have to learn how to work in a virtual team and Managers and leaders need to learn how to build teams in a virtual environment, and this is obviously challenging. Customer service levels have been impacted, so a lot of people don't feel like they're getting the same level of service that they used to because they're talking to somebody in another country who maybe doesn't understand everything about their culture. And then the focus of these theories has shifted. In previous years, it used to be on the worker, and now the theories focus more on the leader and how the leader is managing the company's culture and how to just be a viable company and, and have sustainability for the long run. Some of the things that have happened are that technology has created these virtual teams. So we're able to do video conferencing and instant messaging. There's a program called Skype that a lot of people are really familiar with, allows you to do both of those things. Also, because we have this technology, we're able to outsource some of these, you know, kind of lower skill level jobs to other countries. So you end up with these cross-cultural teams, which presents its own set of challenges. And then downsizing, because we've done this outsourcing, has created a really highly skilled workforce of people who are left here to do those jobs. And it's created a rapidly changing marketplace. So you'll notice that a shift kind of happened in the last 20 years where management theory is now being referred to as leadership theory. And it's it's kind of a small change of word, but it's a, it's a big impact for what it really means. And in the past, contemporary and classic management theories were focused more on the follower. And as we're moving into this leadership theory, it really is focused more on the leader instead. A lot of companies have turned their attention more toward developing their employees and their culture. And what that means is there's, there's a certain vibe, if you will, in every single organization. And a lot of companies are trying to cultivate a, a culture that will make employees want to stay longer because in order to be competitive, you have to really kind of bring your employees up and make sure that they have training and development Otherwise, they're going to go to some other company and all of that investment that you've put into them in, in developing and training them will be lost. So for the future, companies who want to remain competitive in the global marketplace are going to need to understand that one, classic management theories are really only relevant as a reference point. That two, contemporary management theories are really only relevant for day-to-day -day operations. And three, sustainability is only achievable if the company can create an agile culture. Really what it boils down to is that businesses can't continue to use the old manufacturing mentality of productivity and expect for it to work in a global marketplace. Long-term sustainability is becoming a real focus in most industries because the status quo mentality just isn't working anymore. You'll notice that 
some some of our real staple um, industries are failing and floundering, and it's because they failed to embrace these emerging theories of, of how you're supposed to run a team in a global marketplace. As global marketplace becomes becomes the norm, businesses are going to have to become more flexible and open to change or they're just not going to survive.